All right, guys. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is the NBA 2K23 gameplay uh, enhancements and uh, such video. Um, but anyways, by the way, <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Introduction. This is RPG Big Break. Um, pleased to meet you all. Um, I play this game a lot. I, I, def I definitely do a lot of my career. Um, I do play a little bit. Of, I definitely play online <clears throat> with me, my homies. Yeah. You know we have a good time playing the game we have our you know our drawbacks and it's not really in, in us issue it's really an everybody issue and I'm and I'm sure a lot of people will agree on the topics I'm gonna to talk about with you today through this um you know this I want to say an opener of 2k23 we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this little review of what we can see in text right now before we can see it actually in game um my worrisome is so far before I do this whole thing is I'm worried that I'm gonna read this and there's gonna be some really nice things and it's gonna be like oh man that sounds pretty sweet and then the next thing you know the first update they do completely buffs or nerfs everything example last year when you make a player and you play him and you play him in my career he completely deplete they, they deplete your player like you know how people in the past would do you know I'm not saying I did. I'm not gonna say I did because you know, who who be who be that stupid to say that? Uh, but I definitely didn't do it. <clears throat> um, there was a glitch back then, and uh, 2K never got it, was able to. No, they weren't able to patch it. It turns out that there was a uh, tendency glitch, and when you could change your, change your tendencies, your tendencies were what made your, what made your player what they were. They were a hardening effect. If you didn't have good tendencies. Your player could suffer yeah obviously it's based on the player just like badges though that's a great example you can take a really really bummy player who doesn't know the game like that <clears throat> put on some good badges and that man's a whole demon now so i'm a uh that's that's kind of how tendencies are tendencies if you have a high defensive tendency that, that's why i want that's what i want to say work it works the best with is if you have really good defensive tendencies it you notice it the most if you have really crappy ones or really low tendencies, you really feel it. I'm going to give you a great example. Intercepting passes. That's the number one thing people have a problem with. If you have a really high, um, uh, what is it? I forgot what they call it, the tendency for that. Um, pa uh, pass, uh, um, pass lane tendencies, something like that. Pass perception. There we go. Pass perception tendencies. That tendency right there. If you tap square and the moment you go for the ball, your player will actually lunge out and go get it. If you have a low tendency to do it, your player is not going to do it, even if you tap a square. That's why people don't always get the ball when they tap the square button when it goes over their head. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Those getting a little dry here. You get a little, a little bit of water here. I'm already three minutes in, four minutes in, not too bad so far. All right, guys. Uh, let's see here. Let's start getting into the video here. Um, instead of just chatting, just the chat. So here we go off the rip. Uh, 2K's gameplay has a benefit of new improvements to complement any skill set. Flexing on the rim, uh, or flex on the rim and finish your way to ra the rack and experience more uh, authentic animations. I'm not gonna get a whole lot of into it, but basically they're they're reworking the whole pro stick into making it where dribblers can like will need a little they will need some skill to actually be able to dribble. It's not like a right stick up, you're gone. At least from at least from what I am reading, because I can tell you right now I get really annoyed because I had a friend, not gonna say any names. He told me that all he does he uses two animations or two moves and they get him by every time. It just don't matter what you do. Let's flick up with the right stick and using the hezi, hesitation move, and then some people will throw in behind the back and, they, and then they're just gone. So, anyways, like, like they said right here, they talk about how there's just like you know I want to. I want to say there's like some Mortal Kombat kind of crap here, and it's not really crap. It's kind of cool, um, but it basically the biggest difference you're gonna feel is like right here. They these three these three buttons, they, these four buttons, because instead of getting four different anime uh, ways to dunk, you're getting exactly eight. So you're not gonna get from from at least one reading, you're not gonna do a flashy dunk at all unless you put a combo animation in it. I like that, but I don't like that because not everybody's going to want to double tap on the right stick to do a dunk animation when you're getting pressured. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, let me just double tap this real quick. Or, 
most people probably won't do it anyway, so they're probably just going to go open the right stick anyway. But well, what's really going to be funny is all these players that use square to dunk, it's going to be absolutely funny watching them try to use the right analog stick. It's going to be, that's going to be funny. Um, a lot of the, the double throws in the switchbacks, I think, I want to say that, I don't know what the double throw is. Hang on, in a direction, let it go, and put it by the center of the moon. Okay, so that's basically what it is. Basically, basically this is like, a, this, this is double throws. But it's for Duncan. But it's not the same direction, though. It might be the switchback, isn't it? Dude, it's basically the same one. Don't worry here. The pro stick and the same direction, let go. And then right here, letting it. Uh, oh, okay. So switchbacks are really, it seems to be for this right here. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Had a little mistranslation there for a second. So this right here, these are called the dunks. The flash ones are called switch switchbacks or the ones because that's why you're going to go up, down, up. Then you got up, down, and then you got down, down. See the down, down? I think it's too much. I'm sorry. Put this rim hang, dunk, a normal, a flashy, a normal. I guess it's cool to separate the rim hangs, but I don't think it matters that much. You can put that with the normals. Nah, I'll put the, nah, I, I, I take it back. I would put the rim hangs with the flashies. They can't put these two together. That's my opinion. Um, you guys have to let me know what y'all think of that. Uh, finishing your way to that, through the rack. Basically, they're talking about how they're creating double throw gestures for hop step layups and specs. I honestly don't. I this this actually does kind of worry me for big, like. And the, but they do benefit bigs too so it's not like oh yeah the guard's going to be the dominant one my problem i'm going to have is people are going to be <laughs> it's like they're going to like help the slashers and they're going to help the, you know the layup animations for every player so if you have a player that can do layups they make it so like you you can you just flick it right over them and you're going to make the shot like i feel like this is going to be as broke as when they make a character from or i feel like some of these animations they're gonna do uh they're gonna be as broken as when you or when for honor makes their first character or the new character and they're absolutely broken i feel like people are gonna abuse the layup animation but we'll see we'll have to see because a lot of the a lot of the times anytime anytime someone comes to the pain they do a floater they're always like i'm gonna send that shit so we'll see we'll see we'll see Combine skill moves. Okay, so they talked a, bit, a little bit about this, about the attacking size ups. The one thing I thought was kind of cool, uh, they basically talk about how if your teammate right here, I thought this was kind of cool. I took a, a little note right here. Um, so I, I do like the feature of the, what was this one? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. This is where I did it right here. Nope. Is that the one I copied? Well, that's fun. No, I didn't do any notes on that one yet. But I did tell you, I did say that I did love, I, I did copy notes for the other one though, for notes. Um, I do like the attacking size ups. I think it is pretty cool. Uh, basically the whole initiative is you get three. Well, that's the initiative. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I always said they're just giving you more dribble moves. And they're now, now they're basically, the whole, the whole new thing is they're introducing switchback gestures. So it's going to be either like an up down or it's going to be like an up up different animation. So instead of having, you know, basic uh, combination moves, you're going to be having twice the amount now. So the problem I'm having is I, I want to say it's baby steps the 2K is doing when it comes to new animations and new combo setups. They're doing a basic setup, which is like eight combos or four combos. And they're just doubling it. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. They're just doubling it and putting it into a another category for a combination to put it into. Now you're gonna be like, hey yo, that's not too shabby. But if you're a let's be honest, man. I'm gonna tell you right now, coming from I, I I've already known a lot of people out there who probably spam dribble a lot. I really don't know how they're gonna uh, feel like I feel about that. Because like they're already beating their sticks enough as it is when it comes to the analog stick. And now they're gonna have to uh, go a whole lot faster with it and throw more combos. You're here. All over the damn fucking mic if they're sitting there dribbling like that. Especially if they're speed dribbling. Unless the animations are like, a lot slower. I mean, but if they dribble real, real fast, oh yeah, you know they're gonna be clicking on the sticks. 
Uh, so uh, another thing too, I was reading about the adrenal boost. I'm not gonna lie, I do kind of like this. Um, the only thing I will not be happy about, happy about is that. Well, I can't say happy about it yet. The only thing I don't know is how would that affect a big? Like, well, are bigs affected in the same way as guards when it comes to how many boosts you're allowed to have when it comes to the adrenaline? Because it does say you get three boosts. That's completely fine. But why would you ever get a boost way down here with stamina? Like, I will tell you, though, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if the stamina is going to be changed. Because it now feels like, it feels like to me now, they're going to full, fully utilize the stamina bar. So until your stamina bar, stamina bar depletes, you know, your player is going to be playing full out. I think that's fair. Like in the pro leagues, I think that's fair. You should be able to be a little bit tired unless you've got an energy bar or a Gatorade tab down here saying you're tired. I think you should be able to use your full stamina bar. Just like in any other game, just like in any game you play, just like in Genshin Impact. If you run with stamina, you're running full blast until you tire out. You know what I'm saying? 2K, I think they should follow the same route. It would just make the game so much better. Don't sit there. Let me use all this bar. And then around here in this area, I'm tired out. Like, no, that's not how it works. This is the, this is the major leagues, man. And if I get tired out, let me get to zero. Cause then I'll be gassed. There's a difference. You can be a little bit tired here, but you'll be gay. Like, get being gas is different so anyways uh there's that uh, we got three views okay hey, hey hey what's up everybody how you doing i think it's a pretty good i'm thinking i'm doing pretty good for the review for my opener i'm i honestly shouldn't have checked the dang uh the views but it's cool so we're gonna go back into the uh reservoir one more time but that's that's the adrenaline boost i actually like the adrenaline boost uh the authentic shooting see the only thing i'm, I'm getting nervous about is like like i said before i had not seen anything about defense <clears throat> oh, I do got to talk about one topic. It was talking about dribble skills, and I took a, I took a, I took a note on the side. I talked about how I was not happy about one thing. Um, so here's the, th <clears throat> sorry. So I told, I said for the dribbling. Um, here we go. He, they talked about how I read, I read, I read this one little part. It says another uh, major dribbling change is is the introduction of attacking sizes. One of the things we wanted to improve with dribbling in 2K was that while the size up moves look cool, they weren't useful. The new attacking size up provides a lot more side to side movement and are better at forcing the defense to drop and shift, allowing you to bait them one way and then attack the other. Uh, something all great ball handle handlers do in real life. Like they'll do well. My only thing is I have only one comment. <laughs> and one comment only and this is coming from someone who likes to make this build style what if you are a just a defender bro what about the lockdowns it's already bad enough they already got side shifts we already know this why are they still like bro why are they still in the game where's the benefit on defense if you side shift me and i counter that let me get a counter bro let me counter don't pull me to the side. No, let me counter. I should have the right to do that. If they have the right to counter me, I have the right to counter back. That's how every game works. That's how every game works. Even in fighting games, it works. And I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that, man. So uh, there's that part. Um, so anyways, we're talking about the drilling boost, talking about the shooting. Uh, let's see what else here. Shot me doing feedback. So the feedback... <clears throat> so the shooting don't look too bad i do love how the, there's a higher arc and the flat arc I, I like that because for me i don't care like i, I honestly I'll, I'll probably use the high arc i'll always use the high arc you know why because i use the right stick and i promise you nine out of ten the only way you would ever use the right the right the right uh, the high arc is if you use the right stick up let's see what happens here let's see how it works for the high arcs uh okay or is it not or is it, or is it just not controlled it doesn't tell you anyways let's get to the defense i'm gonna ask him about the defense for a while let's see what we got here i'll just put this little little bot on here she'll speak to me she'll tell me the ways let's see what we do whether you prefer to drive the lane back wrong one girly as always defense remains a huge priority for the gameplay team 
We know all the offensive upgrades in the world don't make for a fun game if there are no counters to stop them, so let's talk about some of the great enhancements on the other end of the floor. Shot defense received a nice overhaul for NBA 2K23. Up until last year, we used a simple shot defense calculation that looked at two specific points, the location of the defender when the shot started and the proximity to the ball at release. It worked well, but also had its shortcomings. If the defender's hand or arm moved slightly into a bad position, right at the point of our shot release calculation, you could get a bad coverage <clears throat> score even though it looked like a very good contest. Yeah, I agree with that one. I agree with that one big time. This year, we've created a system that evaluates the defensive player's contesting hand throughout a window of the shooting motion. This larger sample set provides way more accurate results and helps line up the coverage numbers to what players expect based on what they see happening on screen. Okay, so at least what they're telling me is we're getting, it seems, it seems like there is going to be a shotgun test buff. So it sounds like it says this year we created a system that evaluates the players contesting hand through a window of shooting motion. So I guess they just revamped it. Okay, but I want it boosted a little bit more. I want I want real you know. <clears throat> I would say that, that this is a, this is li li this is literally how it should be. If you have a high perimeter defense, they need to buff the around the screen animations. I know people are gonna agree with me. Because I can tell you right now, there's no reason why a guy with a 93 defense should be just like, I don't know, stonewalled by some other guy. I should be able to show more of like a bot, like a more of a shoulder check or something to get around it. This is street ball when we play at the park and stuff like that. Like it may not be able to apply to like me, like pro amp or rec, but you cannot sit there and have someone get bullied with a 93 perimeter i mean i don't really get bullied that bad I, I i have my moments where it is hard to always catch up because i do like a strong burly heaviest player but who's fast because nine out of ten that's a big player and that's gonna be and they're gonna be hard to stop it's just the way it always is the only difference is in real life they get gassed a lot faster that's why they don't use big boys like that and uh on offense as much don't believe me you already know one of them. Uh, what's his face? Uh, I don't know how I forgot his name. If I remembered his name, I would, I would have been, it would have been a lot better, of a, or, uh, you know, statement. But anyways, that's the defensive side. On ball defense. So here goes, cause on ball defense. See what she got to say about it. On ball defense. Hey, good the job. On-ball defensive movement and body UPS received a major refresh with new content that more accurately depicts today's one-on-one -on -one player interactions. You'll also notice a new indicator on the ball handler when in guarding position. This is the new defensive shading mechanic. The three bars on the indicator represent three zones, straight up, shade left, and shade right. The zone the defender's in is shown in red. If the ball handler attempts to attack a red lane, they'll get cut off, lose their dribble, or fumble the ball. Holy crap, guys. I love it. I love it. I love that. I love hearing that. There is a shader. There is a up, a shader up, there's a shader left, there's a shade right. I think that's a little too easy, but it's not that hard to go left, right. I guess. If the ball handler attacks a red lane, they'll get cut off, lose their dribble, or fumble. I ain't gonna lie, that I hope that's not too OP. Now hear me out. I don't think they should they should always fumble it every time. So as long as people ain't sitting there dropping it like I don't know, like the uh, the sixty overall, I think we'll be okay on that. Great defenders can anticipate the ball handler and no 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 let the lady speak. Ball. Great defenders can anticipate where the ball handler is attacking mm -hmm. and will now be more clearly rewarded for it. 
Am I like that? system works for both on-ball defenders guarding the perimeter as well as the post and does a good job communicating to both the offense and defense why collisions resolve the way they do. I like that. Shot blocking. Oh, thank you, God. Shot blocking has been refined quite a bit this year as well. With NBA 2K22, we made a huge effort to improve block targeting and give players the ability to deter any shot that comes into the paint. I like that. For NBA 2K23, blocks have been tuned to a more realistic level, leading to much more predictable outcomes, with the right players making appropriate stops when timing their block attempts well. I like that. No more small guards pulling off LeBron James level chase down blocks like last year. Good. You'll also notice a distinct improvement in ball security for good dunkers. Okay. In the past, oh, yes. it was always risky trying to pull off tomahawks and back <clears throat> scratchers with defenders even remotely nearby. Nah, the bro. Changes to encourage good dunkers to use nah. the repertoire of dunk packages. Feel the reward. Nah, 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 nah. Don't do this. Nah. <clears throat> I can see how this is about to go down, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. Okay, so hear me out. They're, they're, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna nerf these guards trying to prevent these LeBron James crazy blocks. Oh, I, li I like how they just, you know, just throw LeBron James in there. Not trying to get that man some credit. Um, hey, I mean, hey, you know what? Hey, LeBron James is LeBron James. He's pretty good on defense. He's always been pretty good at getting good chase downs. But, the problem, the problem I've always had with the game, and, and you, you, you all got to clarify on this. The Tomahawks are just way too freaking OP. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this right now. You do a cockback Tomahawk in this game, you're damn near never getting them blocked. You can get them, but you're damn near not gonna get them unless you chase it down. It's just, it's absolutely broken. Like you, there's certain ducks you just can't block coming from the front, and you can definitely block them in real life. I'm not saying they'll be extremely easy, but dude, there should be ways to counter that. Like I told you, stop the candy animations. And that works for offense and defense. And most of y'all is the guy that's just really on the offensive side. I'm gonna give you, like I said, like I told you before, if you go right left, there's no reason why my player should just flick and just give up and, and just go right. Oh, cause you did one combo. Okay, stop benefiting all oh, because they can do a combo. I can still sit there and go left, right to counter that combo. Like, let, let, let us have a thing called combo counters. I like that. I like that. You are allowed, I think it's even more fun and you can, you can, may not, you might, you all might not like this, but I think they need to have a combo limit. Okay. A combo limit kit. And you're only allowed to do a combo so many times or do so many combos in general. Like I'm only allowed to do nine combos or 10 combos before I'm able to not be able to dribble as much anymore or I get a or better yet I get a stamina depletion it don't make my player slower or nothing it just lowers my stamina a lot faster like you said like you just said we'll have to see how that plays out and I'm like I'm getting hungry as can be man I am sacrificing my stomach for this game hey I appreciate the follow uh, GTA I appreciate it man it means a lot I uh, wish I had my dang uh, audio for that on but I didn't uh, it's because I don't get my alerts. It's cool though. I appreciate the follow though. It means a lot to me, man. Thank you very much, GTA 5. No, GTA B. Yeah. So the shot blocking, like I said before, it's just really, really OP uh, for the dunkers. And I just don't like that. That's why I said, whoa, 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 chill. The moment she just said, right here, we made some changes to encourage good dunkers. She's a great, basically, uh, a repertory of dunk packages. I love the English. I, I use that very often. You could just say variety, but you're trying to sound, spe sound, I don't know, special here. But you know what? I guess credits to the, editor, to the one who wrote the page. He knows his English good. He goes by the dictionary. Anyway, so a great deal of dunk packages is basically what I would say. So obviously you get... <laughs> being a great dunk you're gonna have a lot more options that's cool i just honestly god don't feel like tomahawk should be in this game if they're gonna be that broken there if there is no way to block it from up front there's no reason to have it at all it, it's not like a fighting game where you can have an unblockable and freaking 
Um, like I'm gonna give a great example. Great example. People who play for honor. You can have a regular attack. People can counter it. Now you can have a uh, blockable. You can't block like, like I know this is a blocking part. You can't actually block it, but you still can counter it. So <clears throat> try to put that into a basketball game and see how that how that goes. There could be an option where you may not be able to fully block the shot, but you can at least put enough of a contest to where they can miss the dunk. I, and that's why I kind of see where you know, even though 16 kind of sucked with that, I didn't always like the fact that not all my contact dunks will go down. But that does seem fair. If you're a good defender, you should not be punished for having good defense. So benefit the defender. If I get a good timing on a block and he's on a contact dunk animation and he's supposed to be able to go over me, let him miss the dunk. I'm sorry. It's just it's just fairness. And I and I know a lot of people ain't gonna like that. I'm wearing no one a lot of people ain't gonna like that, especially the slashers. But why you gotta punish the defender for having good timing? It's just not his fault. Obviously, in the red zone, I guess that's their only dead zone they put in this game. If you're in the red, if you're under the, under the basket, you're getting banged on. But I do feel like they need to fix that too later on. I'll, I'll explain more along the way. Let's go on next. Dunks with significant takeover boosts in the right situations without fear of always getting the ball knocked out on the way up. The shot blocking system also now contains flyby blocks. When closing out late on perimeter shooters, the fly okay. will do a better job trying to get a hand up while preventing defenders from slamming into the shooter and sending them sending them to the line. So when you're closing out on, on perimeter shooters. Okay, so that's, that's I like that. I like that. I like that. So shot blocking system now has a flyby block. When you close on the perimeter shooter, the flyby will get a better job. Again, hand up to prevent the shooter from slamming. Prevent me from slamming to the shooter. I, that's not. That's a lot better. I like that. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> Line. Steals and ball strips. Ball strips are new and improved this year with tons of new content and better coverage. So if you're a smaller defender, quick hands can be just as effective in slowing down slashers and bigs in the paint as a good shot blocker. We've all. All right, I gotta pause for a second. Ball strips are improved this year with tons of new content, and better coverage. If you're a small defender, quick hands can be just a as effective in slowing down slashes and bigs in the paint as a good shot. Now that's then give me my ding badge back. Give me my lightning reflexes. This is ass. You take away my lightning reflexes because they said it wasn't effective. I did feel the difference. I don't care. People can say I got a placebo effect all they want. That's my choice to make. But like I said though, at the same time your game, so do what you want to do. But I tell you right now, you're not gonna sit there above this man's shit right here with quick hands and not give me shit on defense for my shit. For my fast reflexes. Because I didn't bring it to you. Defense has always felt a little sluggish. I don't care how big or tall you are. You it feels sluggish. <clears throat> Next gen might feel different. I, that's okay. But make current gen feel less sluggish. Not hard. Not hard at all. Okay, so anyways, next. So Give me my lightning reflexes. Layups to make sure defenders steal inputs are respected instead. I don't like that either. No, I don't want that at all. Because here's the problem. Because <clears throat> bigs in the paint, what, what what if they just relied on the steal rating? Okay. So I get I, now now we're now we're dependent on a guard to just have a high steal rating. I, I I don't know. I guess there's some balance there. It's okay. I'll I'll, I'll let it go by. But I, I don't, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. I don't like this one part a little bit. There needs to be a timing window because there are people who spam square when you go for a layup. I hate to bring it to you, but going on a square button, I'm sure they're going to get a steal off of every time you drive to the lane. Okay. And there should not be a moment where you can tap square early and get a, a layup strip 
extremely early. You need to time it right on content. That's a little bit different. Put a window on it. That's the problem. There is no skill when there is no at least no timing uh, zone or timing window. <clears throat> I can't say I, I can't say timing window because the problem is the higher your steel, the higher the window. So what it needs to be is just like in green animations, it needs to be a steel green animation. Because they're both reliant on square. Anything you use square for, you use timing for. Not that hard. Triangle, I want to say the same for that, but I guess they don't want to put that in there. I don't know why they, they don't want to put a block meter. I don't know. Maybe because people will actually get block shots. But we'll see what happens next. In the continuation of this video. When the ball does <clears throat> get knocked loose by a block or steel, you'll see greatly improved sideline awareness during scramble plays. Pickups near the out of bounds lines are much more reliable as our diving ball saves that throw the ball back in play. I've seen some amazing 50 50 ball saves that would make Dennis Rodman and Alex Caruso proud. Badges, builds, and takeovers. Okay. One of the first. So before I start this part, uh, apparently I was told by a friend, uh, this is the meat and potatoes on this, uh, on this game right here the badges and the, the, or the takeover system. Let's figure out what they do. First things everyone does when they pick up a new version of 2K is experiment with building a new my player. This year, the major goals for the player builder were refinement, polish, and balance. You still have complete control to build any type of player you want, but the new builder ensures that all builds, regardless of size or specialty, are fun and balanced. The 5v5 environment used last year to test work-in-progress player builds is also now accompanied by a 3v3 environment. For new-gen players, this is especially useful if you love to hoop on the city courts and want to make sure your player can hang in the streets. Another huge addition to the build system is that animation purchases will now be account-bound rather than specific to one save file. In other words, if you purchase an animation for your playshot build, it will then be available to equip on your slasher build, assuming your player meets all. Hey, yo, I gotta pause. I, I, oh my god, oh my god, that's big, right, boys, boys and girls, ladies and gents. This right here. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Where has this been all these years? Where has it been? Like, if I can already, like, like, why buy it? Just give me it. Just give me it. Like, yeah, I can select it. Like, why? Like, even better yet, why? 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 Why is it, like, if it's a free animation, why do I got to go in there and purchase it like it's a, uh, like it's a reward? Okay? If it's free, just give it to me. I should have to go out of my way and go get it myself in this game. Okay? If I get a free, if I get a free animation, give it to me. I should have to go in there just like, just like an example, Curry size up. It came out season seven on uh, 2K22. I should not have to go out my way and go over there and go grab it. Just give it to me. Okay. Cause the problem is there are certain, certain people who can't get onto the game and take advantage of that reward. And guess what? You know, they miss out. And then I guess in their minds, ha, ha, that's what you get from not playing the game. That's not how it works, bro. That's not how it works. Just give me the stuff. We're cool. Um, I like it's kind of cool seeing people coming in and out on the stream. <clears throat> so, anyways, that's the new that's that's kind of fire. I've been waiting that for for that for a minute. All the Next. animations requirements for current gen users, you're no longer limited by the pie chart build system from the last couple years, as it's been like replaced that. with the more robust player builder that new gen. I like uses. that. It sounds fun. New gen badge system. Okay. The most impactful change when it comes to building players is in the form of a new badge system for new general when looking at telemetry from previous years we noticed that players often gravitated towards the same badges and as a result became a little overpowered by stacking certain badges together this year we're moving to a tiered badge system there are 16 badges per attribute category eight in tier one four in tier two and four in tier three Tier 1 badges are the least powerful for your player, but also cost the least amount of badge points. Cost. No, no.
16 by this pure category. So, are you only going to allow only 16 badges now? What's going up here? So, what is bronze, silver, gold? <clears throat> Let's figure it out as we play. There are 16 badges per attribute. Alright, play it. I don't know how to play it again. In tier 1, 4 in tier 2, and 4 in tier 3. Tier 1 badges are the least powerful for your player but also cost the least amount of badge points. Costs go up as you climb the tiers and acquire the more impactful badges. The basic idea is that you'll need to equip a certain number of badges in the lower tiers before you can equip badges in the highest. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Hey, 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 hear me out. The thing is, though, like... Yeah. Make sure this is good. So the idea is that you'll need to equip a badge in the lower okay oh my god so this is this right here if i'm getting this right i could be getting wrong i'm going to buy what's in text the idea is you need to equip oh god you need to equip a certain number of badge in the lower tier before you can equip them in the highest so what i'm getting at now is this feels like 17. i feel like what they're gonna do is they're gonna make sure you play on the bronze level instead of immediately getting a hall of fame badges like you could do in the past which i guess makes sense because you can go from um bronze ba a bronze badge <laughs> then you go from a silver then you can go from a gold um i feel i i, I want to know if it's they're making it based on you know how you can upgrade a badge i wonder if it's going to work like that in order to be able to unlock the next tier of that badge I can see that being very nice. You know, okay, so like, so we're, so we're playing a game. I don't have a sniper. I don't have nothing. So I play, I play, I play. I unlock a badge tier. We're good. But, oh my God, keep me on. Just like with your my player, when you're upgrading him up to get another um, unlockable, so that way he can go above 90 overall or 85 overall. I'm sorry, I'm used to going directly to 90 with uh, regen the rebirths. Um, doing that with a badge system is actually pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. That's really, really cool. So, a great example. I stopped on Sniper. I can only get it up to gold. So, I have to keep playing games and games and games and games. And then I can unlock Sniper to silver. And then I have the option to change between silver and gold and silver and gold. That's my option for that. But then I have to wait even more play more games and get my sniper unlocked to the highest okay I, I i if that's the way it works i like that i really do like that but uh i don't know i just i think i think that's a really really slick idea for no work like that but we'll we'll see the basic idea is that you'll need to equip a certain number of badges <sighs> in the lower tiers before you can equip badges in the highest. i like that i like that i like that i like that the motive behind this change was to encourage players to make some tough choices when creating their badge recipes, make loadouts more valuable as a feature, and bring a better overall balance to the badge game in general. Along with the tiers, we're also introducing core badges, which are four unique badge slots, one in each attribute category, that can be filled with badges that don't count toward your badge points. Each badge like will have a challenge requirement that, once met, will allow the badge to be placed into a core badge slot. We That's also cool. made several changes to the badges themselves, which are highlighted below. Let's get a look at these. Uh-oh. Well, obviously this is for next gen, so. I don't know all these, like I don't know it's bully, but slowly makes it easier to gather through traffic, avoiding collision and destroy. Okay, slip. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So now the steel stuff. I'm not gonna be too upset because now it avoids stripping. So what's the no one G buff? Like if you can avoid strips already with well, a slithery, like bro, like a big man's now forced almost to block because a 60 strip rating is not gonna do nothing against someone with a high ball handle and dunk rating. Okay. The badge now helps some 
So what do they change on here? Oh my God. So now they're they're reworking it, which I guess it makes sense, kinda. But basically, you're you're basically getting a defensive, um, a debuff when you're going against some one v one and you're mismatched. Okay. Uh, I don't know any of those defensive edges. Okay. And then take a redesign. Let's see about this and just finish it off. Finishing. Oh my god, I'm anxious to hear this. To gather through tra takeovers are special abilities you can equip on your my player that you can activate after building up your takeover meters. Mm -hmm. It's basically like getting hot in real life. Ooh. <laughs> While the primary and secondary takeovers remain the same, team takeover has been redesigned. Okay. In the la last couple of versions, a player would activate team takeover for the entire team and make everybody hot after <clears> filling <throat> up the primary. I'm not reading the whole thing, but hopefully it just activates it for like two players that you can select. Like two people can get into it instead of all three. We'll see. Primary, secondary, and then team takeover meters in sequential order. For NBA 2K23, Team Takeover works as a cooperative team system with the entire team sharing a single meter. Okay. Each player on the team has an equal portion that they're responsible for filling up by performing well on the court and being good teammates. Okay. Once each player has filled up their portion of the meter, Team Takeover automatically fires off for the entire team. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So the whole team has a meter. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. New design makes a lot more sense and does a better job representing what it means to be hot as a team and to take over the game as a unit. I love that. I love the team takeover. I love that. NBA 2K23 is packed with AI goodness on both ends of the floor for new gen consoles. Here are some of the highlights that the AI engineers and Dizar have cooked up for you. Offensive improvements. The first thing we wanted to address this year was how the offensive AI uses its dribble move arsenal to attack. The goal was to make the AI more aggressive in setting up its moves, and more deliberate with what moves it used based on different situations. Good. We've enhanced the AI's ability to understand the defender's positioning using the new defensive shading system we previously talked about. AI ball handlers will better assess the situation and then dip into their arsenal of moves to make the most appropriate attack. They now understand how to set up the defender, read the defender's counter, and then attack openings with appropriate combos based on their move set and tendencies. In order to make the AI attack more effective, we knew we had to mix up the time. I'm not gonna worry the damn AIs. I really don't care no more. Basically, they just probably gonna they're gonna make them smarter. But I don't I don't know how their version of smarter is. <clears throat> All right, guys. So in my conclusion, the game is definitely looking better. Like, um, I put my camera on just for the fudge of it. Um, I'll switch over to my scenes, I guess. Go over to this scene right here. So, <clears throat> in conclusion, um, yeah, like. The game looks good. I'm pretty impressed uh, overall. I think I'm more excited about the team takeover mechanic. Now, I'm telling you, if there's, and also, hey, hey, good news. My boy just hit me up. He just sent me a, um, a message. He talked about how Bullet Pass right now has is gone as out the game, okay? Your passing speeds are tied to your accuracy. Um, it's a must have for playmakers, obviously. obviously. Uh, shot percentage has gone out the game for online gameplay now. Uh, yeah, that's when the double taker came in. Uh, let's see here. What else? Signature jumpers.
Now, the, the problem I'm going to have, this is going to make me mad. And you can go in and you can say yes or no. I feel like they have no love for bigs who can shoot. People can do it all the time. I see people do it. But they just have no love for a big they can shoot. So. Yep. Yeah. That's just basically how it is, point blank. So. Well. Pretty much all I need to talk about here, guys. Uh, you guys have to let me know what y'all think, man. And uh, I... I honestly, I, I gave my opinions. Uh, I told you what has changed. You have to let me know what your opinions are and thoughts are, and you know, get back to me in the comments, man, on YouTube, <laughs> on uh, Twitch. Uh, I'll see you guys in, in the streams, man. Peace out, guys. Love y'all and have a great day, man. Thank you. Ooh.